Welcome back to the show. It's just me and Oscar today. We'll just be he- here around the fire, just uh, kicking back with the- some vibes. Get my toesies warm. Uh, we were actually just talking about a uh, Red Dead Revolver. This uh, this game was a uh, slightly different from uh, Red Dead Redemption, and it was like a railgun. So you're not in control of the character; you're in control of his aim. Yeah, yeah, pretty much what you would expect. Because you can beat the game in three hours. That makes it so much easier then, because that's that's one I never played. If it's that easy, then it's it, I was always daunted by like the fact that there's another Red Dead game. Every time we would play, I I would think about Red Dead Revolver and say and think about maybe like what's the open world to it. Just the fact that another open world is available to me I, I just kind of like i don't want to like go through all of that again yeah the fact that you're telling me that then fuck it i'm looking at some gameplay for it right now and it looks like you do control a character but you're like stuck in town you know pretty much like saloons to the left and to the right it almost looks like valentine but like a really shitty version of valentine brimstone yeah it might be different I don't know. I, I just I just, I just saw a trailer for Red Dead Revolver. I don't know. I, I'll I'll have to find it, play it, just just to make sure because that's one I need to get. It's on my bucket list for sure or on my backlog. Oh yeah, it looks like a. Well, I wasn't entirely wrong. Like you do still primarily like do the aiming, but you can also move him. I think this game. When did this game come out? I talked to somebody. I said that it was their favorite, and I'm like, you haven't played Red Dead Redemption. It was their favorite. This is their favorite game. Yeah, that was their favorite one of the three. May 4th, 2004. Or you've played Red Dead Redemption, but you haven't beat it. Not a real fan. It's not, it's not a redemption until the very end of the game. The very end. I'm talking past credits, dude. You know what's funny? I think that... I'm sure I'm going to be wrong again, but I'm pretty sure that the main character... The main character in Revolver? Yeah, the main character in Revolver. I thought that the main character of Revolver is actually John's son. It's all about the lore, especially like cowboys, you know. I love cowboys. I love me some cigarettes around the fire. Your character's name is Red. Oh. <laughs> your mom is Native American. Her name is Falling Star. Oh, and your dad it was Nate Harlow, cousin of Jack uh, Harlow. Just <laughs> Something probably happened to his mom, and he's probably out for revenge. Oh, yeah. I could probably be a writer. That would be the Red Dead and Red Dead Revolver for sure. Any uh, any old games you have like sort of a, a respect for that you you want to go play, but I don't know something's getting in the way. Bunch of my games on Steam Library. If I had a name off, like one that I was just telling you earlier, Fallout New Vegas. Like I I know I'm just I'm just burnt off of Fallout Four trying to do the trophy hunting, but Fallout New Vegas is just so good. I don't really give a shit about the trophies in itself. It's just a really good game. Like I really just can't get enough of Fallout New Vegas. But like having to install all that stuff on my on my computer and my computer is not just like a like a desktop so like it gets wonky sometimes doesn't want to work fully or like the game will crash so it's it's just a lot of work uh also like the witcher games i think are really cool but again like a lot of work to just download on the computer and then witcher games the first one and the second one they're like kind of point and click like especially if you don't have a controller so it's kind of annoying honestly the only other game that comes to mind and it is like a super old game it was like a shooter type game, Kane and Lynch. Ah, I remember that. Dude, it was made by Square Enix. No uh, Kane shit. And Lynch. Uh, didn't they make like a, a a sequel to that like a couple years ago? Uh, yeah, they did. It's called um, Dog Days. Dog Kane Days. Kane and Lynch too, bro. Yeah, I wanted to play Dog Days actually because I played the first Kane and Lynch, and I actually like the story for it. Kane and Lynch are like uh, basically like two two men. And one of them is a mercenary. The other one's like, like kind of a psychopath. Both working together on a job. They're not like really friends or anything like that. Right. In the middle of the job, they kind of got fucked over. So now they're like kind of working together to just kind of fix all of this shit. Towards the end of the game, the first game, it's like more about helping out Kane than Lynch. Because Kane has a daughter. Uh, his daughter was kidnapped. And like part of the last mission is you have to go to like Columbia or wherever the fuck. And like go into the compound, uh, rescue your daughter, and then make sure your daughter gets like basically escapes. But it's kind of fucked up. His daughter's not little, you know, like she's a grown ass woman. Yeah. She's aware that he's a mercenary and that like obviously like this whole trouble was brought on because of him. So like by the time that he actually gets to her and like he makes sure that he's okay and like all this other stuff, she's it's not like a good thing. It's not like she's like, oh, you're free. Like we'll be together later. It's just like, man. What the fuck? Holy shit, dude. This was from Square Enix too, huh? Yeah. Fuck. That's, yeah. that's... I, IO Interactive was a developer, but I, I I would definitely recommend checking this out. It's a really good game. 
I believe that that game came out in the, during the golden era of gaming. Am I am I correct? Because I, I remember seeing that on the shelves of Hollywood Video out here. At... I think a lot of good games came out during like the PS2, Xbox 360 era. I specifically remember that Kane and Lynch on the PS2. Am I wrong? It was uh, like PS3, oh, PS3, PS3, Xbox 360. Because there was an online. It was online multiplayer. Yeah, there was another game that that, that reminds me of Kane and Lynch, uh, Army of Two. That's what it was. Mm, I remember that one too. Of a lot of these co-op games, like that. Does that seems like a co-op game too, Kane and Lynch? Yeah, it is. It it really introduced me to like the hardcore aspect of games too. Part of the settings that they had for Kane and Lynch is that they didn't have a HUD. You don't have a health bar. You just take too many shots and then you're dead or whatever. I mean, your your ammunition and stuff was there, but it was like kind of unnoticeable. So it was just really interesting to like kind of play the game like without having to have all of this shit on the screen. It makes me think of like when you're trying to get into like a like a really good game or like Call of Duty, like hardcore, like really test your limits when it comes to like what a shooter can do and how challenging it is for you. Gamers are always being tested. Well, just now I was thinking about the Klonoa series. I remember playing uh, Door to Phantom Isle, the first one, I'm running through that, be getting all the music sprites, and then just hearing the song at the end. And I don't really remember if it gives you anything else. I beat that one. I wanted to try out two again. I can't seem to find it. That one's probably like going to stay on the backlog for a, a, a good while. Didn't they just make a new one of those just last year? A remaster or something? I, I don't. I don't know. I think the one that I'm looking at is called fantasy reverie fantasy reverie yeah it's, it's a remaster there's there's a joy in playing like uh not Jen- there's 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 little jank in this but there's a joy to play like old vintage shit yeah you want the original it, it, i'm i'm sure it's, this one's gonna look nice but it's, there's something about like the 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 grainy pixely like early 3d models that just kind of tickles me you need the the uh the og ps1 fit exactly that's why Door to Phantom Isle really hit that nostalgia point for me of, of like, I, I can't explain it. It stuck with me for like a long time. It's really anime and really cringy. It fills that void. That, that That's exactly what I think about when it comes to like Game Boy games. A little socket of your time. And again, like for us to keep having this conversation, but bringing like handheld games back into this is just like, it was just so easy for you to just fuck off somewhere you know without wi-fi or anything like that you can just turn the thing on like bull around while your mom is like in the doctor's office or waiting on this that and the fifth i don't think that there was ever a time where i didn't have one of those things on me like my mom's grocery shopping okay i'm in the car i'm gonna go to my grandma's house like i'll be bored like i'm not gonna watch tv or whatever like i'd always have at least my game boy i remember like pokemon red and Pokemon Gold or Silver, like... I'm in the same boat. I, I ran my shit to the ground. My Game Boy is beat. It's it's yeah, definitely... Don't button anymore. <laughs> it's definitely a, a joy from a different time. I, I also, I like, had the Game Boy in my pocket. When it was dark, I had the shitty light attachment that didn't even work. Hell yeah, dude. It just gave you the most obnoxious glare you've ever seen in your life. Just immediately a telltale for how like easy your parents can come in there and beat the fuck out of you. Fuck like yeah. It. The Game Boy SP changed the game, though. With the fucking built-in light, that means like you could play at night when your parents are sleeping now. Yeah, that SP was the shit, dude. I, I, I never had one. I think they knew. <laughs> What's crazy is they've they've been reduxing handhelds like I've seen um uh basically the kinds of handhelds I've seen is like they replace the the LED screen with like a non glare so you can take it outside. It's got it's like a brightness setting, like they replaced like the whole battery pack with like the lithium battery so you can do USB C charging. They got like emulator things so you can add like micro SD. All good, bro. Like there's no better time to really get back into this stuff than now, I feel. If I really had the money, the funds, like I would totally just like, you know, like pay somebody like on, uh, I don't even know where they get this stuff from, like Etsy, I guess, for a custom, custom Game Boy. We know Bungie is like kind of burning. The ship is like in ashes right now. It seems that there have been others that have followed. So we got Sega's being fucking sued, I think. Uh, I think that has something to do with, like, their layoffs, right? For, like, some of the divisions, like Yakuza, Atlas. Yeah, they'd be offshored. Yeah, it's 40% of the, the the Sega group in the U.S. They were going to phase out all temporary workers by February of next year. 
QA stuff and localizations and stuff. They're just like gonna leave that stuff over there across the across the ocean, I guess, in Japan. So that's like over like 200 employees are getting laid off. What's gonna happen? Is Sonic just gonna go back to Sonic 06? A real possibility for that, isn't there? I feel like QA is a is a good position to have. You yourself are seeing what they're what they're putting out. I'm sure like there are some differences between like I, I would I'm just gonna say Japan versus like uh the t- the cultural differences we have over here between the two some things might not translate it probably means that Sega is gonna like just stick to the more like I don't know JRPG type stuff where it's like really kind of like old school I'm not not old school but like really under the radar like RPG stuff they probably just stick to their niche like whatever works in Japan yeah you know just kind of like relay back on like the global which is crazy right because because Yakuza has been blowing up over here and then Sonic's like just had a revive but I'm not gonna say it's definitely didn't take its time for Yakuza to get over here like we've gone through like six iterations before like it actually like really blew up and then with like like a dragon coming out I think my number one concern would be when they do pull back on all of these things and, like, let's say all of these things phase out, what sort of focus are they going to be having for global releases, if anything at all? They may not, they may just like pull a Konami, honestly. They may not just even bother to like come out with new Sonic games after a while if they're not already just going to improve on the last one that came out and just keep adding DLC because I think that's what they have been doing, right? Like in seasons or whatever, like the the DLC for this last game, I don't know a lot about the story or if you beat it, but like my understanding was that like every time there was a DLC, there was like a new character of Sonic that you had to like rescue or whatever. Or I don't know if that was just all part of the main DLC. I don't know. Like then I also have to think about okay, well if they are gonna do like let's say they they just keep all of their big ones, right? Like Sonic or Yakuza, um, they have to like of course come up with a story or a better story than before as to you know what's going on and i guess why it deserves another release you know they can do this easily with yakuza yeah it's it's so good right now dude like a dragon gaiden that what what that's called what's called like a dragon yeah like a dragon gaiden yeah Yeah. like now more than ever is pretty good there's a lot of i don't know there's potential i'm talking like they're just going to take the game away from us altogether but it's this is a step in that direction i believe like it, it's not even with sega to union unity's like laying off so many people what is that one platform that uses um i think you just said it, yeah right? unity, unity yeah it's not even so much as a layoff but they want like they want like a cut of like revenue and proceeds of games that have already been created yeah that issue you know that I mean? came up earlier too and it's just like that's so stupid like i saw this guy making a point where he released his game i think for free but because of the amount of like downloads that the game had and because he used Unity, he owes like Unity like millions of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars, even though the game is free. I'm like, that's fucking dumb, bro. Like that doesn't that doesn't work that way. Anybody who's smart enough to just not wanting to owe them is just gonna remove the game off of Steam. It's just gonna be like a total loss. Like I feel like Steam is gonna have a really hard hit because of that. And they're just gonna like turn around and start suing Unity. They're talking like they're going to lay them off. They haven't really said that they are. Um, the CEO said, like, verbatim, we aim to address these opportunities to emerge as a leaner, more agile, and faster-growing company. And then uh, they're gonna, he said they're going to share what they're going to do over the next few months. And we're just pretty much waiting till the next headline, which is Unity lays off so-and-so and all these people. <clears throat> I'm not going to talk because yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm playing fucking destiny but I, i'm i'm pretty much over it already i'm just waiting for the last season um and then after that i'm hopping off it's a content thing for others it's more of like a micro transactional thing the guy i was telling you about that i see on youtube i think his name is like pirateware or pirate software or something like that he talked about like when he worked at blizzard he worked for i think this one particular team in which they were like working on this game for two years or three years or something like that and it involved like him doing overtime for the game so he put like all of this trials tribulation and energy and sweat into this game that he made with blizzard they released the game it didn't really do like the best it made revenue but it didn't made enough based off the effort they put into it later on like a couple months later or something like that they come out with the very first cosmetic for world of warcraft 
and it's like a little mount or something and i think it was like five dollars that little item that cosmetic made more money than the entirety of that game and i think that that tracks saying that like anybody who's willing enough to like pay for something like a cosmetic these people are pay- basically voting with their wallets right here yeah, I hate I hate how true that that is. Cause I, I I talk shit about Bungie, yet I bought that fucking Halloween skin, that insect skin, with the wings start flying. I'm like this is cool as yeah. this is cool as hell, but I hate myself. I wouldn't even call myself a victim. Like it's just so like I like I play the game too. Yeah, it is what it is, you know. Yeah, it is what it is, man. Like you you're gonna want something because you want it, or you don't want it because you don't. I'm not gonna lie and and say to myself like I saw Destiny is releasing um collaboration with the witcher for the next season and i'm like oh dude for sure i'm gonna fucking get these costumes those swords look fucking radical man dude the two swords on my back especially for each class like how could i not i don't know if you saw the tight helmet that shit looks nasty yeah for sure dude like i like i said bro i'm i i play the game bro i know what i want like if i vote with my wallet it would be on something that i like you know not just something stupid no i like stupid things you know, a lot of people are talking about this Rogue Cop game, and I'm not going to lie. I don't know if you've seen it or seen the demo for it, but that shit kind of looks like it slaps. I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of it. Yeah, it, it does. I, I can honestly, I'm, I, I'm honestly not a big Robocop fan. I know it's like big. It, it just, it's it's a cool concept, but I, like I've never seen the movies to completion. Maybe it's one of those movies where I need to sit down like in this moment of time and just watch it. I never gave myself that in the past. So now as an adult, maybe I can finally see like, oh, this is cool, but it might be dumb cool. So I, that's like, I have to go in with no expectation, you know? <laughs> it might be cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've seen a lot of it. It, it looks fun as hell. If, if this doesn't sell you on it, I don't really know what does. I know that you know what that 70s show is, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, the dad from that 70s show, he's the antagonist in RoboCop. I didn't know that. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah bro is it just red is it just red <laughs> right yeah like could you just imagine like fuck a dumbass <laughs> right? that's cool i'll tell you what i do i'll watch more of it and then i'll i'll make an opinion whether or not to watch the actual movies and then if i like it from there then i'll i'll, I'll grab it up and see what's up because i want to shoot people in the dick that's all i've been seeing people do when they play it it's like i gotta shoot everybody in the dick that's what he does right this one dude I watch is fucking, he has a shirt that says, remember that time Robocop shot that dude in the dick? Yeah, that, that's a game I, I wasn't expecting like much out of it, honestly. But I'm hearing a lot of good things and people are still playing it. I still have Final Fantasy 16 like staring at me right here. I, I don't think that shit has ever been more truer. Like I remember when I was just like barely getting into like college right after I graduated and like the guy who was teaching or who was supposed to be teaching me like, uh like game development you know like game making all that good stuff like even he's he's just like bro like you have no idea how many games i have like wrapped in the plastic like just still like sitting in a like in a stack of just games that i've never touched because Dang. i've just been so busy working i'm just like i really hope that that never happens right like, that helps, never happens to me bro like now now i'll be lucky enough to just actually have dedicated time to do something reasonably while other people are also on in that same time found out one punch man is is still going as a comic and it's pretty far because i've been so wrapped up in the in the actual in the manga once it reached to the point where i stopped reading the web comic i'm i was i kind of just like hung on for the ride but like for like a little for like a little bit and then like that's when i asked myself like i when is it really like is it really done like does he just move on to this one like it's his same like I, I jumped ahead to the the latest chapter that he put out through all the all the malware and ads like i saw like just some characters i had no idea and then i saw their fucking saitama just jumping buildings like he's strolling through the fucking park and he's like what's that over there and i'm like yeah this is fucking one punch man this is still going i hope he has time to rest says he's on chapter 145 oh that's even further than when i read dude fuck. fucking love and appreciate that that he's still he's still doing his own that's pretty much i'm not i'm not talking smack about it because this is a lot of work that he's putting in it, it, oh, it's like the one comic is like the rough draft somewhere in the process of it translating into the manga it gets like ironed out 
and uh, I, I kind of want to see that now that like he's so far the, so much farther to the head in his comic than the than the jump manga I, I want to see like where the creative liberties will be taken if any will be taken it, it says a lot the fact that he's still going and putting it ahead like I hope it's not out of pressure though that's that's the thing like I, I want it to be out of like the the creative love for it for like the, the manga I think that's what we can pretty much get out of this I I have like my reserves on the actual manga series because I think it does go in a different direction and I'm not sure if it's gonna be like a hundred percent like by the book I mean, me and Danny, we argue all the time about, like, how the fucking fight ver happened in the webcomic versus how it happened in the manga and what they put in the anime and all this other stuff. So if we ever get to see, like, One Punch Man, like, animated or, or if the manga gets up to this point in the webcomic that, you know, it's kind of like what you said, that it just doesn't really do justice. It doesn't stray too far off from what his purpose and his intent on what he wanted the series to look like and be like up to this point. I'm just, just kind of skimming through this chapter and it's looking pretty badass, honestly. Like, yeah, it looks like it's really just getting into the nitty gritty of stuff. And it's long too. It's not like a short, it's not like 10 pages. When he went back into this again, he started doing this for like a like longer amount of time. Definitely worth going back and check out. Yeah, right, right now in the manga, it's going... It's it's answering some some questions about where where Blast has been, his connection to like God. What about Metal Knight? Oh, I fucking I don't even know, man. <laughs> He's out there just doing some fucking evil shit. I think he has. Oh, he has. I want to say he has the Monster King, his heart, and he was gonna do some fucking wacky shit with it, or something like that. He some kind of machine demon god or something like that and then he took he took like all the parts and then he just dipped so he's out he's out doing his own thing i'm just kind of just waiting on that too because he he seems like he's like a, gonna be an underlying plot point speed of sound sonic no you you get a side of speed of sound sonic that i've never fucking seen before like when he's a kid saying like yeah fuck this ninja village because i didn't know that they were uh if they had said it before then i, I fuck i forgot but Sonic and and Flashy Flash have been <laughs> fucking schoolmates in the Ninja Village, and like they do that thing in fucking Shonen where they just tell each other the dreams, and it's pretty much like Speed of Sound is like, yeah, fuck this village, I want to do my own thing, I want to be free. And like an inner monologue, or was he telling something? No, he, he was telling Flash, and so there's gonna be something going on there. I'm I'm hyped, I'm hyped for it. You know, I always love me some goofy ass Speed of Sound. And I, we see Saitama's along for the ride, so it, it's like, and he's actually wants to be there this time. This this is gonna be fun. He's out there with, he's just with the uh, blast, this little that little alien shit, that fucking uh, that one mon that one leftover monster. <laughs> is it just like a guy in a suit with a little black thing on top? Oh no, no, that's that's in that's at his house. But yeah, he's still alive too. No, I'm talking about like this one little monster with the uh, with the one eye and the belt. I really wish you would have put more into Mob then. Mob was really oh, good. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm glad that it ended. Damn, just all the all the possibilities that could that he could have done with that too. It is really faithful to the comic though. I remember me and Danny finding One Punch Man like a long time ago, like the web comic, and to just keep reading it and seeing it for what it is right now, man. It's like it's really great to see that this, the, this has been one of the greats, one of the ones to become one of the greats, and this just shows. That me and Danny have good taste in manga. There, I said it. <laughs> yeah, especially because you found it first. Like, I said before it. it became like mm -hmm. a popular series. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why I told him. I told you guys read the fable because this shit is awesome, dude. 2013, uh, when I like moved out, I like frequented a GameStop that was right next to my dorm, and, and I like made friends with the guy who was like working the cashiers. He always recommended some real fire shit, dude. Like, we're talking, like, good manga. He recommended me JoJo's Bizarre Adventure before the anime came out. Like, he was telling me about all these parts, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, not, <laughs> not even listening. Like, dude, the biggest mistake of my life, bro. I'm like, you rectified that. You you, you read it all. I sure did, boss. Like, there are so... Uh, like, I, I did keep some of his recommendations on deck. Like, I just never bothered to look at them. So when I did, I was like, oh, yeah. I like to think that some of these more grittier, grittier series that we've started uh, and hopefully like become popular later on, I've been wanting to get into for a while. I've been hearing it a lot. Is like a manga called Homunculus. 
Oh, okay, so it looks like the serialization is over, but there is a live action Netflix that was released. Oh, no way. Two years ago. Now that I think about it, 20th Century Boys, Monster, those are good ones too. Oh, and yeah. And they put those on, on Netflix too. I can't really say I would know, like, what's the next big thing that's going to come. Like, I, I don't read or watch a lot of new seasonal stuff, but every now and then I kind of get, like, interested in something that I see. But I, I just, like, reading it, like, I never feel like it's it's going to be that good where it's going to be like, oh, yeah, this is going to be up there with, like, fucking One Piece. I haven't played the first Alan Wake. Like, I know it was free for PlayStation a while back, so I have the opportunity to play it. But Alan Wake 2, honestly, like, kind of scares the shit out of me a little bit. Not gonna lie, like that's that's. I was watching some some cutscenes on this game and like the boss fights for it, and it's pretty it's, it's pretty dark, bro. It's definitely a, almost on some nightmare fuel type shit. I don't think it's like cult scary. I think it's more like cryptic dark scary. Yeah, that's definitely the vibe I got from it. It's something yeah, it's like, something I don't think I'd be able to appreciate well enough, honestly. Fucking like soul capturing like torture for the rest of your, you know, immortal existence type scary shit. I, I think of the evil within, and I'm like, no, no, this is this is a lot more scarier than that. The the evil within is like monsters, and you get like, you know, like some some like Silent Hill type vibes. But this is more like, I guess, I guess like in a sense, like it makes me think it's real. They don't look like monsters, mm-hmm. you know. They look like people. People. It reminds me of Resident Evil Seven. You know how like the the family from Resident Evil Seven, they're just like fucked up, fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah, they're just they're just fucked up. It's it's like that kind of scary, you know, where you just meet people and they're just out of their mind. They're just batshit. Like they're just pretty much demonic. <sighs> like it, this this is the same kind of vibes that I get from Alan Wake Two. I'm kind of here for it. I'm not gonna lie. Neither with Alan Wake Two. Like everybody's satisfied. They're more than satisfied. That's the general consensus I'm seeing. I think one of the last categories that I want to talk about here, they have one for best adaptation. Uh, the the nominees would be Castlevania Nocturne, Gran Turismo, The Last of Us, the Super Mario Bros. movie, and the Twisted Metal series. And this is like, this is so easy. Like, there's no doubt that The Last of Us is going to win. Super Mario Bros. movie is going to be a second runner up. And then, like, everything else is just going to be slim pickings. That Twisted Metal show was nice, though. It was pretty funny. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I heard the same thing too. I heard like a lot of people liked it. It's good, man. I liked it. Like, uh, what's his name? John, John, whatever. The guy who does, um, what is it? The Falcon from the Marvel movies. He's the he's the main character. He's 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 great, man. He's like he's definitely a funny character. You know who else is in the show? Uh, Stephanie, um, Stephanie Beats, Stephanie Beats. Oh, uh, yeah. Frozo. I don't know. I kind of want to see Gran Turismo. Just, just to see, cause I, I grew up on that one. I haven't seen Castlevania yet. I gotta, I gotta watch that. Last of Us, honestly, like I watched that with my parents, and they love that shit. And then Super Mario Bros. movie, you know, that's always a good time. That was a good time, honestly. Awesome. Yeah, that's the, that's the lawful good choice. This is the Super Mario Bros. movie. The chaotic evil, I think, is Twisted Metal. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, because there's a lot of there's a lot of crazy stuff that goes down there. It has to go in a certain direction for you in order in order to make it work. And by the time that they actually introduce Sweet Tooth into the show, it's pretty it's pretty great. I'm not gonna lie. Like I think they just did a great job with Sweet Tooth at first. It would definitely be something for you to check out. One of these days, it took me a long time to, to fucking start watching Peacemaker. Well, shoot, guys, thank you so much for uh, tuning in, and uh, we will definitely catch you on the next one.